Hello, my pack, my tribe, we're back. Part two. Trying to uh, find my listing. Sorry about that. Um, let me figure out how to do this. Okay, well, figure out how to. message through this
Okay, so I don't know how to get this person back. Okay, well, I don't know how to do this, so hopefully she'll get back to me. If not, oh well. Um, just have to hope she's tuned in. Um, so, getting into what I was talking about before the break. Um, Wendigo is actually, uh, in my opinion, my theory, uh, two different things. I think a lot of the darker, more aggressive stuff, like uh, uh, the whole cannibalism thing, that gets attributed to the quote unquote Wendigo is actually something else. Um, I think Wendigo, actual Wendigo, or something completely different than that. Um, it's kind of like. Uh, say this uh it would be kind of like like uh you know a fox gets into the hen house and eats all the chickens and then like the chief of copper gets my for it. that kind of thing um not to say that actual winnego are all rainbows and puppy dogs but I don't think that a lot of what we attribute attribute to them is actually them. Is what I'm getting at, and and here's my theory on that. Uh, the first recorded, and let me stress this: recorded accounts of Wendigo. took place in Oregon and Northern California after the uh, Donner Party tragedy, which I don't know if you're familiar with that. And what I'm talking about is, is recorded by papers, et cetera, et cetera, which is where I think a lot of the misconception comes from. Now, here's where I'm going with this whole tie into the, the Donner Party, and uh, I can never remember that dude's name. He, he was actually a, a, a cannibalistic serial killer in the 1800s that uh, arrested, and I 
dinghy was hung, actually. Um, roughly about the same time, 1800s, same era. Um, in any case, so uh, here's the Donner Party, and we know that cannibalism was very much thriving there because it had to be. Um, they would have star all starved to death. There would have been no survivors at all. Uh, as as it was, there wasn't many. Uh, but I, I think that created kind of a perfect spiritual storm, if you will, that uh, kind of created this separate entity that is kind of piggybacked on Winnegan. Um, once again, not saying when to go are all rainbows and puppy dogs, because we're not, but all I'm saying is I think a lot of what we attribute to them isn't actually them, and it's actually something else. Um, that's my theory. Well, moving on, I guess. Um, So anyhow, um, <clears throat> I want to get into something else here. Um, <laughs> I have some thoughts that flow through my head all the time that sometimes I can get a little bit lost. Um, So uh, that it's why, like a lot of time, I'll, I'll look up articles or or uh, you know, videos or whatever, um, and kind of talk about you know subjects that are already there, um, and then I'll give my opinions on. Uh, here's an article about Gustin Aries. Um, it's from September 13th of this year. Uh, it says, Gustin Aries haunted Shirley message from the grave. Uh, I was preparing to leave on Route 66 track with my best friend when she messaged me that an accident caused a huge dent in her jeep. Once I knew she was okay, I wondered hold on. I gotta wait for the rest of it to look. Once I knew she was okay, I wondered how in the world they were taking off the 
this happen? Well, the insurance company gave us a rental deed. It seemed as if we were leaving without a hitch. That is, until we reached Winslow, Arizona. In my prior post, I mentioned a strange face that appeared to be peering out of Shirley's eye pupil. It looked like my deceased ghost hunting friend. Well, he had a message for me. We went to the gas station. Julie got out the fill tank and started pumping gas. When it got to $6, it clipped off. Clicked off, and she realized she needed to use her car. An elderly Native American lady. Uh, came up to her and told her if he went. And said she used her only six dollars to buy gas, and her son moved the car around to another pump while she was coming up. Reached into my purse, got a bunch of bills, and handed them to her, telling her to her tank up. Nice door. Um, drove down the road to find a store where Julie could go purchase things we needed. While she was inside, I was in the Jeep. I pulled up Facebook Messenger to see who was messaging me. I'll just have a few hundred messages on there, but this time the screen was blank except one word active, followed by one friend, Paul, who had died in January, whose image appeared to be in haunted Shirley's eye. Uh, it listed November 2nd, 2016. I blinked my head, shook, I guess, out loud. Paul, I asked. I looked anxiously to the store door, hoping Julie would be out fast to take a picture of the screen of herself. But the cell phone screen darkened, and I tapped on it to bring it back, and it now lists all the hundreds of messenger people again like it normally does. Was Paul along on the trip with us? Or haunted Shirley tampering. I can't say for sure, but I got the distinct impression that my friend, who dealt all his life with haunted objects, was considering himself a bodyguard. If that wasn't odd enough, our first night on the trek, we stayed in a haunted hotel room. Guess what photos on the wall beside our room? Shirley Temple. Uh, what they're referring to. This haunted Shirley is a Shirley Temple doll. So that brings up another topic. Dolls. Uh, a lot of people don't know this. Uh, they think that uh, all these haunted dolls, like you've seen on TV, like Robert the Doll, which is now in the possession of uh, Zach Bagans at his haunted museum in Las Vegas, or uh, Annabelle from the Conjuring movies. They think that this is a, a new thing, like, like relatively speaking, that it's only like this century or, or the last century that apparently this has been happening. It's, this goes way back. Dolls originally weren't meant as toys for children. Way, 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 way back in the day, ancient Egypt and in uh, pre-Columbian America, dolls were created to house the spirits of the dead. That was their purpose. That's why they're hollow. So. Uh, Things like, like a Shirley Temple doll, which I wish I could get my hands on a Shirley Temple doll. I'd probably be a gazillion, gazillionaire because they're rare. I I don't even know how many would be even in existence for Shirley Temple, who was a very young actress back in the day, kind of like, like the original little girl in Hollywood. 
Um, I mean, that's got to be worth like a mint to the right buyer now. It's got to gotta be hundreds of thousands of dollars at least. Um, so, but yeah, it's not entirely surprising that that doll or any other doll for that reason is haunted. I don't even like the idea of giving kids like Barbies or G.I. Joes for that reason. Um, I mean, I would do it because she wants to break a little kid's heart, you know, on Christmas, but I wouldn't necessarily like it. Is my point. So, anyhow, that was kind of a weird story. I kind of get the feeling like like that story is actually part of a series of stories that. I'm just now experiencing, um, which, you know, is cool and all, but uh, it's not really what I was looking for, so I'm going to go to a different site altogether and see if we can't find some juicy tidbits for our consumption. Uh, I'm going to one called Paranormal Daily News. Let's see if this is any good. Ooh. What? Um, I saw this headline if I can actually get to it. I don't, I don't know when the, this story came about or how the story is. Uh, I guess it's from the 12th of this month. Uh, it says, Titanic Captain's Haunted Mirror being auctioned in England. Uh, the Titanic is a tragic tale that has been told numerous times. Books have been written on the subject. Movie films have been made. Or the films have made their way into our homes. However, the story of Titanic never forgot. Uh, while the movie Titanic was big by American movies and novels, the actual captain of the Titanic was a British man from Staffordshire. Uh, captain Edward John Smith went down with the ship April 14, 1912. Shortly after his hit by an iceberg, now a silver frame Mirror rumored to be haunted from owned by the captain of the Titanic is going on auction in Staffordshire, England. Uh, the haunted mirror being auctioned in Staffordshire is expected to haul in a whopping ten thousand pounds or more. I don't know what that translates into in American dollars, but I imagine quite a few. However, you have to be willing to take on a ghostly presence as well, since it is rumored the captain's face appears in the mirror on the anniversary of the Titanic's demise. After the passing of Captain Edward John Smith, his housekeeper could choose one of his items to keep. She chose the mirror and claimed she would see the captain's face on the fated day where the Titanic was no more. With the mirror, there is also a note written by Helda, the sister-in-law of housekeeper, Ethelwyn, and it should be the following. Ethel always spooked me when she said that at times she could still see Captain Smith's face in it on the anniversary of the London Titanic sign. 
Uh, it is no surprise that the haunted mirror is of some interest to many paranormal investigators and to me. Of course, it is also an item with historic significance. The price could go quite high. Aside from the mirror, auction participants can also expect a collection of jewelry, gemstones, or antique silver. Of course, not all of them have haunted have a haunted story like this one. Wow. I mean, can you imagine that? But yeah. As haunted mirrors go, I gotta say, as cool as that is, Zach Bagans in his haunted museum has the one that was always really interested in. He has the haunted mirror of Bella Lugosi. For those uh, that aren't up on uh, your Hollywood histories, or don't have an appreciation for old movies. Bella Lugosi was the original Dracula. He, uh, like the old, tiny, like monster movies, Dracula and Frankenstein and all that. He was a huge part of that. Um, the whole movement of filmmaking in Hollywood. Um, And he was an occultist um, to boot. He, he was actually a big part of what was known at the time as the spiritualist movement, which uh, contained a lot of other key historical figures, including Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the uh, author of the Draw Holmes books. Um, he was a world renowned spiritualist and a good friend of. None other than Howard Houdini. Uh, so it's just kind of interesting that, you know, his mirror happens to be haunted. Let's see what else we got here. I think this website is mostly British. Uh, Oh, well, I here's one I have to read. Um, as I've, I said in the previous broadcast, I am a practicing medicine man, and one of the things that I do is what's called smudging. Um, what that is, is it is a, uh, a ceremony uh, that dates back a thousand years where we uh, burn sage. We essentially use sage like incense. And use the sage smoke to cleanse an area. Um, and this headline says the smudging ceremony explained. I want to see if they got it right. Anyone with a keen interest in the paranormal. Hold on. Now it's loading again. Anyone with a keen interest in the paranormal or the spiritual, for that matter, will have encountered the word smudging. While most people are already familiar with smudging ritual, here is a detailed overview of smudging and its meaning for those of you who are not. The word smudging is used to refer to a specific ceremony. Smudging finds its origins in Native America, where the ritual was used to purify or bless people. Nowadays, the ritual has spread to other cultures as well, since smudging is commonly used to bless or cleanse homes. They are incorrect right there. Or rather, I should say, they are only half correct. Um, smudging is always used to cleanse an area like a home. Um, as well as you 
bless people. And not just people. That our horses were blessed by Smudge before they would go out on a hunt or to war. Um, smudging was actually a, a very uh, artist that, that found a home in all sorts of things. It was a regular occurrence. Um, in some ways, it was even more commonly used in daily life than holy water to a Catholic. But it is kind of along those terms. So, anyways, uh, kindly used to bless everyone's homes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Smudging is believed to eliminate so-called low vibrations and suck energy, so it is often used in rooms and sometimes in tar homes. It is also popular in the practice of people in Wicca culture. Okay, yeah, they're wrong. Sorry. Sorry. I, no. So, uh, low. Oh, my God. I hate this misconception. It's not low vibrations or low energies. It can be any energy. It can be anything as minuscule as as just a simple spirit that that's, uh, you know has found way into the light, therefore to the other side, all the way up to something truly demonic. It has nothing to do with low vibrations and stuck energies other than the fact that, it, yeah, it can be used for that. The truth of the matter is, is it's all about the intention of the user. In a 30-year career, I've done 489 house cleansings using safe smoke. And have only had to do one return visit in 30 years. And that one return visit, by the way, was because the people in question didn't do what they were told. And the negative just got back in. They were supposed to salt all the entrances to the home after I left, which they did not do. Normally, I would have done that myself, but I just run out of salt. And it's a very particular kind of salt that I use. Personally, the purest form I can get my hands on with the Mediterranean sea salt. Yeah, I'm not going to carry it. I wonder who their source was for that story. I don't think they talked to a Native American. I can almost guarantee they didn't because I'm not even going to get to that whole thing. That's just kind of upsetting. Oops. Not something over. Sorry, I had to take a drink of my coffee. My mouth was getting a little dry. Anyways, um, here's another one that says Ed and Lorraine Warren remembered. Um, okay, I'm, I'm going to read this, but uh, I'm probably not going to read it all because I have a story to tell. Um, Ed and Lorraine Warren are two paranormal investigators whose name will forever be associated with some of the world's most famous paranormal cases, like uh, the Amityville house. Um, 
there are even several movies out there which are based on the case of Ed and Lorraine. But who are the people behind the movies and what are the most famous cases? Let's read on to find out. Ed Ed Warren and Lorraine Rita Warren are two American paranormal investigators. They are also authors to write about the most famous cases. Of course, some of these books have been translated to movies. This includes The Conjuring and, Annie and Annabelle. Uh, one of their cases is made into a movie and a television series, Amityville. While there are so many interesting facts about the terror, one of the most interesting facts is undoubtedly Ed's background. Before becoming a paranormal investigator, Ed Warren served in the Second World War. He was also a police author. Later on, he would become a demonologist, author, and lecturer. Uh, why he underwent such a drastic curse was still unknown. Uh, no comment. But we'll get to that. Um, Lorraine is just as interesting as her husband, though. While her husband identifies the demonologist Lorraine professes, she is a clairvoyant, and yes, she was, and a light trance medium. Uh, his husband and wife, the pair, has investigated numerous famous cases inside and outside the United States. At the time of this article, Lorraine uh, is 91 and lives in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Unfortunately, Ed Warren died several years ago at age 79. Um, no, I don't fear death, not one I, uh, I know I'll be going to a beautiful place, a place so spectacular it defies words, quote-unquote, Ed Warren. Uh, their most famous case, the Warrens had many famous cases over the years. To give you an accurate overview of their most famous cases, we went looking for the most detailed ones. So if you'd like to know more about Ed Warren's work, be sure to read the overview of the case. Well, one of the most intriguing and controversial cases the Warrens have ever worked on is the case of Annabelle. The case also depicted in movies such as The Conjuring and Annabelle. Even though the movies are loosely based on the facts, Annabelle the doll can be viewed in the Warrens Cult Museum in Monroe, Connecticut. According to the Warrens, Annabelle is a Raggedy Ann doll gifted to a student nurse in the 70s. Uh, the student nurse and her roommate were possessed by her called Annabelle Higgins. While they originally cared for the doll, the pair became scared of the doll's behavior and would call upon Ed Moraine. In the end, Annabelle was taken by Ed Moraine who displayed her in her cult museum. The doll was displayed in a special case and visitors were warned not to touch the case or remove the doll from it. Um, apparently, which uh, I'm not going to get into all the details, but uh, the parents are the case that the movie The Conjuring was based on. Uh, another Warren case that got made into a movie is the case of the parent family, which originated in Harrisville, Rhode Island. It's claimed the parents' home was haunted by a 19th century witch who cursed the property. Uh, they're Famous case was made into the movie The Conjuring. Uh, of course, there's the Amityville, which um, I'm not going to get to that whole thing except to say that uh, uh, Ronnie DeFeo Jr. Uh, killed his family in that house. Um, in his trial, he claimed he was being possessed by demons. Whether there's any truth to that or not, hearing like interviews he actually gave and seeing court, you know, transcripts and the like, I kind of doubt it. Uh, Ed and Lorraine were interested or criticized a lot, which is no surprise since most of us have held the 
skepticism. Disagree. Uh, when it comes to the cult, however, I think Edward said it best when he talked about the curtain. So I'll leave you with this quote to mull over. And this is Edward saying it. The name of the game is to expose evil for what it is. It really is. Do not be frightened. God is on our side. The Holy Virgin is on our side. St. Michael the Archangel is on our side. The martyrs are on our side. The atheists, the devil worship evil in all forms, cannot defeat such an army. Be proud of what you are and what you're doing. Hold your head up 